All right, welcome back everyone to Self Longevity Blueprint. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to longevity and all the latest and greatest research that's coming out. So today, let's talk about artificial sweeteners, specifically Splenda. Now, Splenda is used by millions of people out there. A lot of people prefer it because of the fact that, quote unquote, it's an artificial zero calorie sweetener. So if they're trying to watch their calories, they think they might be doing themselves good. Here's the question. Could they actually be doing themselves tremendous harm? And what specifically is that harm that you need to know about? Let's dive into the research so you can make better choices for yourself. Now, when we talk about sucralose, which is the generic version of Splenda, Splenda is the brand name. When we talk about sucralose, it's a chlorinated artificial sweetener. The thing that makes it so concerning is the fact that it is about 385 to 650 times sweeter than sugar. So if you're somebody who's trying to kick your sugar habit and you switch over to sucralose, you're actually going to strengthen those sweetness pathways and even things like regular strawberries or fruits, they're just not going to taste as sweet anymore. Now, when we look at the approval process for sucralose, and remember this happened back in the 80s and 90s, when they looked at approval, both in North America, Europe, and Asia, the studies were all coming from the 80s and 90s. And those studies, what they basically said was a few things. And these are important concepts to understand. There are six specific items. First, that it was stable inside the body. In other words, it went through your intestine unchanged. Number two, it didn't damage the gut microbiome. It left all those gut bacteria alone. Number three, it didn't damage the intestinal barrier. So it didn't create a leaky gut or damage those tight junctions. Number four, it didn't accumulate inside the body. Once you took it, you either excreted it, or it got used up and that was the end of it. Number five, metabolism, that it did not affect your metabolism. It didn't affect your blood sugars and it did not affect insulin. And number six was that it was not toxic to our DNA. In other words, it was not genotoxic. Now remember, these are studies from the 80s and 90s. So let's take a look at what the latest studies show. And the latest studies, unfortunately, contradict all of these findings. So first, there's a product or a byproduct of sucralose called sucralose 6-acetate. This is found in rat urine and feces. Sucralose and sucralose 6-acetate, it does disrupt the bacteria inside your gut. Scary enough is the fact that it's also detected in human breast milk. So in other words, moms can pass it on to their babies. Another thing that's important is, is it does cause leaky gut. In other words, it makes those tight junctions more permeable. When we talk about bioaccumulation, there's an interesting study that was done in rats where they had the rats go through a feeding period of 40 days. After they stopped feeding them sucralose for 40 consecutive days, what they found was that it took two weeks before sucralose was no longer detected. In other words, even after stopping, there was all of this sucralose that was built inside specifically their fatty tissues. When we talk about humans, especially folks that are trying to lose weight who might have extra amount of fat, you're going to store more of the sucralose in there. Now, when we look over to things like insulin sensitivity and sugar, what we find is, is that sucralose increases insulin resistance and increases the amount of blood sugar floating inside your bloodstream. Both of those things are terrible if you're trying to be healthy, if you're trying to lose weight. In addition, what's more concerning is the fact that when we look at maternal ingestion, so if you have women who are pregnant and they're ingesting it, not only does it affect the women in terms of their gut, it also affects the baby's gut microbiome and it also affects the baby's ability for their liver to detoxify. And lastly, overall, taking sucralose blunts the effects of your thyroid gland, which as you know, thyroid affects so many aspects of our metabolism. And then lastly, there's a study that just got published in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, in which they also addressed all six of these points in very elegantly designed experiments. And what they showed also was that sucralose and specifically the metabolite, sucralose 6 acetate is genotoxic. In other words, it damages DNA. Number two, 
is that it causes leaky gut. And those experiments are all there to show how it's able to disrupt those tight junctions, which allow more toxins from your gut to be able to get inside the bloodstream. And lastly, causes increased gene expression of things that lead to inflammation, oxidative stress, and cancer. So what's the bottom line? What's the take home message here? It's very simple. If you don't use Splenda or sucralose, don't start. If you use it, now might be a great chance to work on stopping it and go back to healthier whole foods to live a better, longer, happier life. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, if you got questions, comments, I'd love to hear it. Drop them in the chat below and I'll see you guys next time.